On the eve of PPAI Expo, the promo front crew tell you all about Nick Saban retiring from Alabama, Bill Belichick being fired from New England, and a top three, bottom three about Las Vegas you don't want to miss. All on Promo Upfront. Bright light city gonna set my soul, gonna set my soul on fire. I got a whole lot of money that's ready to burn, so get those stakes up higher. Viva Las Vegas! That's right, Kirby. We are on the eve of the Super Bowl of the promotional products industry. That would be the PPAI Expo in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada last week. I'm sure we'll talk about that. This is episode number 184 of the Promo Front Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Bill Petrie, with me as always. I couldn't decide what to call Kirby today. He's the captain of the craps table, the sergeant of slots, and the rear admiral of roulette himself, the one and only Kirby Hossaman. Kirby, how the expo are you? Man, I am great. Now, first of all, I just want to give you kudos. That may be the best song you've sung. Like you really nailed the Elvis thing. That was that was really good. Thank you. It was really good. And in, yeah. in in honor of Expo, I was putting my uh, putting my hand sanitizer on just to nice. do this podcast. I've I've gotten my uh, B twelve shot. I'm hydrating hydrating like you told me. I'm taking vitamins. Yep. I'm doing my best. And as uh, Josh, our buddy, said, doing my best to lick no- doorknobs to build up my immunity. So I am doing great, man. How are you? I am not licking doorknobs, Kirby, <laughs> and I'm not going to share. I'm not comfortable sharing what I've been licking. Um, but I am ready for Vegas next week. Um, and I'm super excited. You know, it's always one of those things uh, that really kind of kicks off the year right. I love how that big Super Bowl of our industry really is at the beginning of the year. It really does get the uh, year started off right. But, you know, Kirby, what's interesting is the fact that Expo's next week, it got me to thinking, you know, I mean, it's finally here, right? It's finally here. And and you know what that means, right? Do you have any clue what that means? Uh, That we're all going to do our family reunion that we do every year? (sighs) Kirby, please. (laughs) Once again, you're incorrect. <laughs> it means we all get to stop by booth number 2333 and see what Miles Wadsworth and the crew over at Logo mm-hmm. Mats is up to. Now, we all know they have a wide range of indoor, outdoor, point of purchase mats that are bold, bright, durable, and more importantly, made right here in the USA. But did you know they have some new products, Kirby? Did you know? Did you know? I didn't. I'm excited to find out. Well, thank you for knowing and allowing me to share. Yeah. Number one, a de- the desk impressions mat. Now, this is a stunningly gorgeous chair mat for use on hardwood floors. What a great mm-hmm. item for a large office. Yeah. Uh, they have a point of purchase scrape mat, and that's purpose for per- uh, perfect for fundraising, product promotions, and events. Get the gunk off your shoes. And I think my favorite, Kirby, the branded comfort mat. It has amazing anti-fatigue properties. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something, it's the first thing I'm going to go do in Vegas is I'm going to run over to booth 2333, go stand on the comfort mat and kind of protect it because that's going to be mine. It's a tough <laughs> week on on, on yeah. feet. So I'm going to go ahead and claim that as my own. Now, I know you're as pumped as I am about seeing this fabulous new uh, the mer- mats along their already impressive uh, uh array of merchandise aren't you yeah i mean you know i've always been a fan of logo mats i mean they obviously have a great product line but the idea that they're introducing some of these new products that actually does get me excited because i think that one of the things that you do is you fall into a rut oh well they have that right and so i know i know but you know when you get introduced to some new products it kind of reintroduces you to a, a supplier like almost for new so yeah i'm excited about that Kirby, I could not have said it better myself. I thought about it. I, for a moment, I said, you know, I probably could say that better. But actually, the way you handled it, perfectly. Couldn't have said it better myself. And as a reminder, Logo Mats is celebrating their 20th anniversary in 2024. So why don't you help them celebrate by stopping by booth 2333 next week in, Ve- in Las Vegas during the PPA Expo, Expo. They can help you, as their tagline says, stand out where others fit in. Now, Kirby, I'm kind of pumped up, as you can tell. Yeah. We've got Las Vegas. I'm feeling better than I have in months. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I've got some energy going. I got my my coffee uh, and my uh, branded promo up front uh, coffee tumbler. 
but I don't have the upfront section. So I'm a little sad. I'm a little melancholy. I'm a little blue, but I'm excited because the person sharing promo up front is you. Yeah. And I like the rhyme there. That's really good. So I'll be honest, I was struggling for a promo upfront topic. So I'm going to tie this to something that's a little more pop culture. Um, mm -hmm. but I think it does, uh, resonate. So sure. I don't know if you've seen this, but air travel across the nation is feeling the ripple effects of the amazing, unfortunate, uh, incident where, uh, an Alaska airlines flight, a door size panel blew off in mid air. Uh, is so that bad? Is, is that, is that it's, wrong? It's not great, Bob. Uh, okay. so what a, like, I think many of us who do travel on a regular basis, it's like your nightmare, right? It's the, it's the thing that yeah. fortunately never happens, but all of a sudden happened and we're seeing delays all over across mm -hmm. the country. So number one, I'm going to be making sure that I'm wearing my seatbelt at all times sure. when I'm on the plane. Um, but you know, are you a little bit concerned? I mean, like, hopefully they'll get it worked out in the next couple of days, but I don't know. I've, I've, I've got a little bit of anxiety because I'm like, it's one of the reasons I try to have direct flights and try to minimize sure. those things as much as I can. But are you a little concerned for all of us heading out to Vegas? Well, uh, Sandy's actually coming to Vegas with me this year because yeah. of the, the award uh, that I'm receiving. So I've made sure to put her in the window seat. So I actually feel pretty good about uh, air travel. Uh, this week, uh, honestly, there's a little buffer. No, no uh, joking aside. Yeah, I, I, you know, I. This is going to sound very strange. I understand that occasionally, despite best efforts, planes crash. It's a horrible thing. Thankfully, that doesn't happen very often. And air travel travel is statistically so much safer than driving a car. That being said, when things just start falling off planes, like I, I was a couple of years ago, like an engine fell off. You know, yes. when things just fall off planes. That does raise my anxiety level. And what's interesting, and I think over the course of our careers, I probably have traveled a lot more than yeah. you for yeah, work. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I've traveled a lot more than you. And I used to be a really, I'd get on the plane, I'd kind of just close my eyes, and I'd fall asleep. Yeah. I'm actually quite a nervous flyer the older I've gotten. Um, hmm. Turbulence makes me very uncomfortable. Interesting. Uh, I do, I do kind of grip the seat a little tighter. I just don't. And I don't know what happened. I don't know. There wasn't like a, some sort of event that happened. Like, okay, there's the line of demarcation. I've just become a little more of a nervous flyer. I'm really happy when we land. I'm not like freaked out. I read, I can sleep on a plane. I can do all those things. But if there's turbulence, I'm a little, I'm a little uncomfortable. So when doors or large panels fall off a plane, yeah, that's concerning. And, and you know, you hope it was just a one-off maintenance issue, but it yeah. seems like if it was a one-off maintenance issue, those, I think they're 737 nine maxes, the, the nine series max, yeah. I think they'd all be yes. up in the air, but as we're, as we're recording this, they're still all grounded. Yeah. So I, I don't know. And they've, man, Boeing has had that whole 737 max has been a freaking disaster from the yeah. get go. Yeah. And one of the, for me, like I, my hope, and again, maybe this is the optimist on me, but I'm like, I'm, I'm assuming that panels are not going to fall off in midair. Like that was a one-off. We haven't seen a lot of that. I'm not, I'm more worried about just the significant delays that they're calling for in yeah. getting people there. One, you know, one of the things that when it comes to travel, any kind of travel, and I've yeah. actually got a little bit more planned this year, come, this yeah. year um, you know, my rule is like, I go the day before. Like I just, yep, I, I, I'd rather, I, I, and if I can, I, I get direct flights. If I, you know, sometimes you can't, but there, there are certain things I do. And so my hope is, you know, cause I'm flying in Saturday. I'm not sure. And I think you are too, right? Yep, is that right? Absolutely. And then, yep, Saturday. And, and then SKUCon on Sunday. So I've got that. And so I don't want to be late for that. And so that's where my anxiety is more about just the things I, are, am I going to get there on time? Yeah. Am I going to get there? So I, I guess what I would say to everybody is plan ahead get there early, yeah. be patient. God's and pack your patience. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and here's one thing I, 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 I agree with you. I'm the same way I used to play connect the dots uh, with my air travel. I'm very much, let's go direct. So I've, I've yeah. kind of transformed over to Southwest. I used to fly American airlines a lot. Um, and I don't think, I think there are going to be some delays, especially yeah. if you're flying United. I think they have most of the, the 737 series nines maxes. Um, I think the bigger challenge is going to be the weather. Uh, yeah, that's there's a good some point. really hardcore weather coming in, at least here, like while we're gone. 
Yeah. Uh, the low is going to be like six and the high is going to be like 13. Last time that happened, uh, my ceiling caved in because the pipes froze. So no one's going to, you know, or, or we're going to make sure we have faucets dripping. We're going to turn up the heat, close blinds and really try to keep the house as warm as possible. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think the bigger challenge is going to be weather. Yeah, um, so be, be safe, everybody. That's <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Kirby. Is there a better way to start off your year than with the knowledge that there are supplier partners that are completely dedicated to helping you hit your goals this year? I count on it. Well, there you go. And, and <laughs> so since you count on it, that's why it's so important. We talk about our friends over at Kanata from blankets to towels to footwear to sublimated merchandise. Kanata has the, the products that will absolutely set you apart from the competition in 2024. So if you're going to be in Vegas next week, head over to booth 1558. If you're not going to be in Vegas, visit them at KanataPromo.com. Absolutely. All right, Kirby. All mm -hmm. right, Kirby. All right. I, this is not a promotional products topic per se, but it's mm -hmm. a branding topic and one that, um, you know, it, it, it kind of shocked me. Nike and Tiger Woods mm, are yeah, parting ways. Yeah. So it's an apparel partnership. They were, you know, Nike started a golf division mainly for Tiger Woods. Uh, he has his own brand there, the TW, that people have, have come to recognize. Now, they shut the majority of the golf division, the clubs, the balls, I think, in 2012. But they kept on with the um, apparel division. And it's a partnership that lasted to over 27 years, which is unheard of, yeah. that type of corporate sponsorship. Now, the agent for Wood said it's just time for the next chapter. I don't know if this was Nike's decision. If it was Woods' decision, my guess it was probably more Nike than Woods because they've gone through, uh, they're, they're laying off a lot of people and cutting costs. But, <laughs> excuse me, over the course of uh, the contract, of that 27 years, do you know how much Tiger Woods earned from Nike? I, I feel years? like I read it, but I don't remember. Okay. It's $660 million, wow. uh, which would make Dr. Evil pretty jealous, quite <laughs> frankly. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that partnership breaking up after so long. And what does it mean for Nike as a brand? What does it mean for Tiger Woods as a brand? Just as kind of, I, I know I'm throwing this at you. What yeah. do you think? You know, I think that in the world, like this week, you know, we talk about the silly season, right? And how there's yeah. all these changes in the promotional products world that get announced right. around this time. And that's certainly true. And, and you know, I think of our friends like Mandy Rudd, who got new positions, right. and I'm excited for all those folks. But holy shit, have there been changes in the sports world this week, right? Oh, like, yeah. And like between Tiger but, Woods, and you mentioned Nick Saban, and Bill Belichick, and Pete Carroll, yeah. and the, the German guy that you mentioned, um, what was his name? Uh, he's actually Italian, but his name's Gunter Steiner, and he okay. was the team principal for the American, the only American F one team on the grid, the Haas. Okay, F1 team. didn't know, didn't care about that, but big deal to you in sports. Lots of changes, and so I guess the the, the thing that I was thinking about is, man, the only constant is change. It's not usually yeah. like this. Um, no. So, but you asked back to the initial question. Yeah. What does it mean for Nike? You know, I think it's a cyclical. I think that from a business perspective, they're going to need to look for their next star and in, in their right. next business model. Um, I, I it, it does speak to the idea that looking at athletes that have longevity have yeah. has a lot of power, right? I mean, they've done a good job with those folks like that, the LeBron James, Michael Jordan, yeah. Tiger Woods. From Tiger Woods' perspective, I mean, I saw this and was like, oh, okay, so he's going to come out with his own line right? He's going to come out with his own branding. And I think that's the natural evolution of somebody like Tiger Woods. Right. So those are my initial thoughts. Well, here's, okay. So let's talk about two things. The From a Nike perspective, to me, it's, again, I think it's more of a cost cutting move. Yeah. Tiger Woods still is the biggest name in golf, but golf's not at the peak. It was sure. 10, 15 years ago. Partially because Woods Tiger hasn't player. been relevant. Right. Yeah. Well, well, I think he's still very relevant when he shows up. It's kind of like Elvis. Yeah. When he on shows the golf up. course, though, he's not. He hasn't course. won in a long time. Yeah. No. No. It's not a knock. Still, I'm just. It's just an is. Right. No, he's still a legend. Look, yeah. Neil Diamond may not have the greatest voice anymore, but when he shows up and sing, people come will come right. see him. Same type of thing. I think for Nike, they're going to have to find a instead of putting so much behind one athlete like they did Jordan, like they did Tiger Woods. I think it's going to be a lot of 
uh, I don't want to say micro sponsorships, mm -hmm. but a lot. Uh, I think I think it's going to be much more of a shotgun approach than a rifle approach for Tiger. I don't think he's going to do it on his own. I think he'll find another partner to do it. And I think it'll be more specific to golf. Yeah. I think it'll appeal to the Gen Xers. Um, it'll be like a partnership with TaylorMade or Puma or, you know, title. You know, I think he still has a sponsor for titles, but I'm talking for apparel. I think it's going to be something like that. But, you know, we did talk about uh, it, what's interesting to me most about anything is the longevity, 27 yeah. years. It's crazy. And then we talk about the changes that happened this week. Nick Saban at Alabama, 17 years, years. retiring. Bill Belichick, 24 years at New England. Apparently, it's a it's a mutual parting of the ways, whatever. And then you... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, it's always mutual when, when you know, somebody like that steps away, yeah. Right, and then you had Pete Carroll leaving Seattle, and he was, I guess, fired after 17 years. So I actually did a little research, uh, Kirby. The longest-running corporate partnerships in, mm. in sports, and it floored me. So I'm not going to quiz you on this because there's okay. absolutely no way... Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to go from from not as long to longest, as, okay. if I can speak English good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hugo Hugo Boss and McLaren, 33 years. That's not longer. It's no longer active. But that was a and that was the wow. McLaren Formula One team. Gatorade in the NFL, 40 years and counting. Wow. Okay. Honda in the PGA Tour, 42 years, no longer active. Now we get into the ridiculous ones. Shell, Shell Oil, and the Ferrari F1 team. 73 years and still going. That's amazing. That's unbelievable. Um, it's, it's really the Olymp here. Yeah, the Olympics and Coca-Cola, 95 years still going. Wow. But wait, there's one more, Kirby. Slozinger and Wimbledon, hmm. 120 years and still going. Over a century. You know, we think, uh, we, we talk about change and how it happens so fast and things. You know, what did, what did Paul Bellantone used to say? The pace of change is never slower than it is today. Yeah. It still shows you that there can be some longevity yeah. when the partnerships are right. So I, I just thought it was super interesting to share those things. That's uh, really good, I'm man. the only one. No, that's, that's really cool. That's cool, man. I appreciate it. All right. Why don't you regale us with the topic of your choosing? So as this drops, this will be the second Friday in January. And yep. I think many... People started January 1st with um, goals, with resolutions, with mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and I heard something recently that said that the that Strava, Strava is a fitness app that tracks your okay. activity and all that. So it's actually the app that I use um, okay. for runs and bikes and all that stuff. It's a, um, I, I, So if you want that kind of app, it's a really good one. Yep. Um, but Strava calls the second Friday of the year Quitters Friday. Because most people have given up on their fitness goals by the second Friday of January. That's how quickly people kind of depart from it. Um, yeah. And obviously, if you've given up on your fitness goals, a lot of times then you've given up on your finance and all the other goals. Yeah. So I, I thought it might be interesting to try and help people not <laughs> give up on their goals, not be a part of no. Quitters Friday. And so I had... Um, I have a couple of pieces of encouragement, a couple of thoughts, and I wanted to see if you would kind of jump in, give your own. Is yeah. That, is that yeah. okay? Yeah, go. Fire okay. away. All right. So the first one is um, a, con a, a concept that I heard from John Acuff called the day after perfect. One of the mm -hmm. reasons that people give up at this point is because they're like, they're killing it, right? January 1st, 2nd, 3rd. And then like the life gets into it and they're they're perfect. And then they miss one day. And mm -hmm. many, many people are like, eh, they just give up. And, and so John Acuff talk, talks about the day after perfect. And so if you have done really, really well, and then all of a sudden you miss by yeah. now, just like give yourself some grace and be willing to start over. That's number Yeah, one. which I mean, there's no such thing as perfection. Yes, exactly. You know? um, and, and if you're chasing perfection, you're going to be disappointed. I don't know right. if it's today, tomorrow, next week, but you'll be disappointed because it's not achievable. I think what you said is perfect, giving yourself some grace and realizing that whether you're on a diet uh, or you're on a fitness track, or even if we're talking business, you're talking growing, growing yeah. sales or increasing new, new clients, you're going to lose clients. You're yeah. going to not land a client you thought you were going to get. You're going to feel like crap one day and, and it's raining outside and you're not going to go for that run. Yeah. Uh, and, or you're going to go find a can of Pringles and make love to it. You've got to <laughs> Give yourself the grace. As long as you don't do, you know, 
I always look at it this way because I'm not, of course, I'm not perfect either. And, and I think, you know, we've talked about, I've really shifted kind of my lifestyle quite a bit because of my health scare. I'm not perfect, but the day after perfect, I start over again. Yes. And so I don't look at it as the day after perfect, but the day after I've been good, if I've done something I shouldn't have done and then my body doesn't feel great, you know what? I start over because it's a fresh slate. It's a new day. Yeah. And, and I think that, that at least it helps me stay on track. Yeah, so. I love it. Uh, number two, remind yourself why, right? I think yeah. that some sometimes we set those resolutions, we set those goals because we want a different life. We want a different fitness level. We want a different finance level. We want to make more calls. Yeah. We want to make more money. Um, kind of reconnecting with the whole purpose yeah. of why you set the goal, I think sometimes can help you right. get back on. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I think 100%. I think, you know, to me, the goal is that tip of the iceberg, right? And everything underneath the water is really the reason why you're doing it. You know, why are you eating better? Is it because you, you know, I hate when people say, I just want to lose a few pounds. That is the least specific goal in the history of, of ever. Yeah. And so if you're trying to lose weight, it's I weigh X and by Y, I want to weigh Z. Yep. That's a specific goal. And it's important to be that specific because if it's just a few pounds, you can easily talk yourself into, you know what? I've still got enough. time left. I'm going to have some Cheez-Its. I'm going to, you know, whatever. So I, I, I agree with you. You have to remember what, why you want to do this thing. What's the ultimate goal? And then my final thing, and this is something that's really helped me both in fitness and in sales, um, is yeah. track the daily activity, not the overall goal. So um, I'll tell you who first said this to me that I thought was interesting was Jeff Hayden. He's an author mm -hmm. and a writer. Mm -hmm. And he talked about when it comes to big goals, you set it and forget it. Right. Like, because if you focus, if you say, I want to run a marathon or I want to do a million dollars in sales on day four, you got to do a three mile run. And you're like, yeah. I can't even do a three mile run or I'm struggling with this. There's no way I'll right. ever get to 26. But if you right. focus on here's what I need to do today to get to it, I think it right. makes it in more manageable chunks. Last year, first quarter, I said I wanted to do a certain amount of push ups and a certain amount of miles. And mm -hmm. I actually created an Excel sheet. And so that I had to fill in the number. Now I have Strava, so I still use that, yeah. but I actually went in and, and it, it really made a big difference in the number I did because I didn't want there to be a zero. And yeah. so I've actually done it again this quarter. And it's like, I'm, it really has helped me. So by focusing on the daily activity, not on the big goal. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, Jeff Hayden, great author and, and really, you know, what's not recognized is his contributions uh, as the triangle player in Van Hayden. Uh, just a tremendous, a tremendous musician. Uh, joking aside, no, I agree with that. What I always call those are micro goals. You you have those little micro goals that feed into the the, the larger goal. I do the same thing. I track everything I'm doing right now. Um, what do, how, you know? How much am I eating? What do I feel like? How how uh, is my body reacting to that? Um, you know, I hate that it took a, a trip to the ICU to make that shift for me, but it absolutely flipped the switch. Mm -hmm. And I'm super. And so I, I, I could really relate what you're talking to having that spreadsheet, having the, the fitness app like Stravia, you know, a great example of someone who did that is uh, Brandon Petrick. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, did a 60 day challenge. I'm not super familiar with it, mm -hmm. but he had very specific goals over the years. He broke day. it up into 15 day segments and then broke down those 15 day segments into individual days. And it was about running how many, I think, push-ups or sit-ups or pull-ups pull you want to do. I don't remember mm -hmm. how many books he wanted to read and all that. Yep. You know, and and then he, he, I believe he posted it online every yep. day to kind of have the, the community be his accountability partner. And I think, you know, I'm sure that helped him achieve whatever he ended up achieving. So I love breaking it down into what I call, or you might call micro goals. I love no, that. I like that a lot. So really uh, the overall topic is, as this drops today is Quitters Friday. So I think Bill and I just want to encourage you to keep going and hopefully make 2024 yeah. really great. Well, 100%. Cer certainly, Kirby. I can't quit you. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I, I teased it in the opening. I've got a top three, bottom three, Kirby. Okay. Okay. And this is top three, bottom three, Vegas Experiences, PPAI Expo Edition. Ooh, now, do you I'm want me to excited. start with the top three? Can we start with the top three or the bottom three? Uh, I was going to say dealer's choice because that feels right, but I, I let's go yeah. bottom three. Let's go bottom. Bottom three. three. All right. The third worst Las Vegas experience, <laughs> 100% is 
the airport. I believe it's called the <laughs> Harry Reid uh, Airport now. Uh, the, it takes forever to get your bags. That's usually a 45 minute wait. Mm. Uh, the security lines coming, getting back home are insane. Even if you're pre-check the cab line, can we talk about the cab line? <laughs> it's a serpentine cab line sometimes takes a half hour. So quite literally you can land at two o'clock PM, not get to your hotel until four. And that's fairly expected. I would say Kirby. Would you yeah, agree with that? Yeah. So I've I generally I, I do okay there. I will say that a couple of years ago, and it was it was one of those. I actually think I was traveling on my birthday back then, and it was a it was a snow day. It was like it was one of those days, and then yeah. uh, a piece of luggage got caught in the in the luggage thing, and they didn't send anybody. So I ended up getting up on there to try and get it loose, and they were calling down over the loudspeakers to yell get at me. Down, get, yeah, off. get down. Get down. Well, send somebody fix it and I'll get off here. So I, I okay, I, that's a good yeah. start. That's a good start. Yeah, sir, I'm going to need you to get off the baggage claim handler me right now, or we're going to send you to the local jail facility. All right. Number two, bottom three, worst experience in Vegas. The crush of humanity at specific hours at the Mandalay Bay elevator bank. <laughs> Man, if you're staying at Mandalay Bay, uh, it, it, it there's right after the show closes, there are certain times where it's yeah. just a gaggle of humanity there. Yeah. You can't breathe, especially if you're a supplier. You've been on the show floor all day and you just want a couple minutes of silence. It's a tough place to get it. Uh, that elevator bank is tricky. That's really good. And especially for those folks who are maybe not completely and purely extroverted, there's no escaping yeah. it. I, I Now, I, I will say I, I stayed the last couple of years at Mandalay. And I had a good experience. And part of that's just navigating when you're there, right? right. Yes. Um, but I'm back at the Luxor this year. And I will say that- Are I'm, you? I'm I, I'm not looking forward to that walk either. So, yeah. so you know, it's, you take one, you take one, you lose one, right? I did the Luxor for about 10 years. And, and I, I convinced myself I liked the walk and I did, but it was always difficult on days where I was speaking because that's... you're running back and forth so much. Uh, so I'm back in Mandalay Bay again for the second year in a row, which I'm I'm excited about. All right, Kirby, the worst thing, yeah. the absolute worst Las Vegas experience is forking over eight dollars for a bottle of water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, the cost of it, anything over there, I'm with you on that. Right. Go ahead. But 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 bottle of water. I mean, in a place where you are severely dehydrated, just getting off the plane, your your skin instantly becomes some sort of tanned leather good. You need water. You need fluid. And to charge eight bucks for that is a crime. It's a crime, Kirby. Yeah. It, I, so no argument. I'm, I'm with you on that. I would. So my other addendum to that is mm -hmm. that at least a lot of the hotel rooms I've had, including the last couple at Mandalay Bay, they don't have an in-room in coffee maker. Um, that would be on my list of top three, bottom three. Okay. Really annoying that I can't just have a cup of coffee without having to deal with humanity in Vegas yet. Ah, uh, it's far more lucrative to get your ass down to Starbucks. Yeah, so. that's that's why it's related. All right, <laughs> let's focus. Let's focus on the positive, shall we, Kirby? Let's. What are the top three experiences for PPI Expo? Number three, everything's under one roof, mm. um, and there's a familiarity to the place. Now, I know a lot of people complain about that, and you have to be intentional about getting off campus on occasion. Yeah, but I love the fact that everything's under one roof. Uh, I kind of like for a couple days, after a couple days, I'm ready to get outside, but for a couple days, I don't know what the weather is. I don't worry about it. It's kind of nice. I really, and I like the fact, you know, this is the 21st or 22nd year for uh, 21st year because we missed uh, 2021 because uh, of COVID. 21st year, I believe, uh, Expo's been in Las Vegas at this facility. I love that I know I can close my eyes and be on autopilot. There's something very, very comforting about that to me. Yeah, I actually couldn't agree more on that one. This, if I were, and again, I think the key here is a. It's a great experience for the people there that it's there. Yeah. But you know, if you are planning this event, having yeah. it going in multiple places would be a nightmare. I actually, I'm with you on that one. Number three, yeah, I'm, well, I like it, it. it. It was in Dallas. The, 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 two, one or two years I went in Dallas, it was bad. It was bad uh, for that reason. You had to go all over the place, and nobody, you couldn't find people. Yeah. All right, number two, Kirby. It's a family reunion. Now, mm. I, I know a lot of industries say, oh, our industry is real special and tight. They're all wrong. Uh, <laughs> I've actually done the research on every industry that is known yeah. and several that are unknown. I'm not going to even get into those. But this industry, the promotional products industry, it really is kind of a family reunion. It's so great to see people. Yeah. It's so great 
you know, I think our industry has done such a great job of embracing social media. And as my friend Danny Rosen would say, as social media turns a handshake into a hug, you see people you know, you see people you've met only online and you feel like you know, yeah. you see people that maybe only see once or twice a year. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Yeah. No, I, I I think I actually referenced that a little bit earlier in the podcast that it really is, uh, you call it a family reunion, a class reunion, yeah. whatever it is, but see yeah. people that you only see once a year, but uh, gosh, it's, yeah, it's the part that I look the most forward to. And well, and, and no, well, number we'll one, see. that was, we'll that would be your number one. Yeah. So the number one best experience for Las Vegas PPAI Expo edition is leaving Las Vegas. That's correct. <laughs> There's nothing better than getting the hell out of that cesspool after you've been there for four or five days. For me, Vegas is a three-day city. I'm yes. never there just three days. About day four, day five, I am really ready to get out of the over-oxygenated over air, uh, walking around with a cocktail like I'm Dean Martin. I'm really ready to get back to my normal routine. Yeah. So leaving Las Vegas is absolutely the best thing about anything in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, and and you know, there's a lot of positives. And so I love this top three, bottom sure. three, by the way. Um, you know, I think reconnecting with people, the education is really great. Um, and I'm actually looking forward, I haven't walked the show floor in uh, several years, but because Jade is coming this year, I'll probably I'm making yeah. an effort to do that again this year a little bit more. Yeah. And I'm kind of looking forward to it, kind of seeing some of those new products with fresh eyes um, and seeing them through the eyes of a new person to the industry. So there's a ton that I'm looking forward to, but I I feel you on on number one. Usually at the end, I'm like, well, and yeah. I'll be honest with you, the way it happens for me is almost almost always, let's say I'm leaving on Thursday. Yeah. Wednesday morning when I wake up, I'm like, get me out of here. It it it, yeah. it happens a day before. Like if it were, yeah. if it were, it would actually be better if it landed on Thursday. It's almost always the day before. I have to push myself to be positive, sort of yeah. that last full day. Um, and once I get into it, I'm fine. But yeah, it's a it's a yeah. three day town. I agree. Yeah, I don't hear. My thing is, I chock full. I'm so busy the days I'm there, I don't have time to generally think about leaving. So and then when I do leave, I'm leaving on Thursday. I'm on the first flight out. I'm on a six forty five a.m. flight out. And I, that's fine. I don't mind getting up at four in the morning and going to the airport. It does yeah. not bother me in the least. Yeah. And I don't have, so I don't have the time of like, uh oh, I, I mean, I know you're busy too. It's not to say yeah. you're not. It's just, that's how it works for me. I am stupid busy that Wednesday, Thursday morning, I get on a plane and go, all right, Kirby, that was a great top three, bottom three. It was. So we did picks for PPEF oh, this yeah. year. I forgot. Um, and we, we have a slight issue. Um, Kirby, you went four and two last week, mm -hmm. uh, winning the national championship game, missing a couple of NFL games. The only game I did miss was the national championship game, which means I went five and one. So we picked exactly 100 games this year, Kirby. <laughs> you ended up at 65 and 35. I ended up at 65 and 35. I don't so think So here's what issue. we're going to do. <laughs> No, it, there is. So we have assembled here in Franklin, Tennessee, a tribunal of people. Uh, to really decide what the tiebreaker should be. And after all the discussion, National I completely Championship ignored, <laughs> no, I completely ignored their recommendation. And what we're going to do, we're going to do one final bet. Okay. We, we talk about it anyway, the Super Bowl. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? We, and we'll wait till the Super Bowl week. We'll do that as a tiebreaker. Okay. They're, 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 can't, they're, they're one game. Hopefully we pick different ones. And then we'll also pick final score for a further tiebreaker. But wow. Okay. Uh, can't, can't believe that we actually that close. Uh, I, I closed the gap as it were. Yeah. Nice job, man. That's great. And uh, you know, it's, it's been fun and I'm, I, I'm, yeah. I like that we're going to do one more game. That's good, but I think it's re I'm ready. Yeah. Kirk, Kirby's been ready to, you know, <laughs> I, I can almost hear the heavy sigh in Kashokton when I email <laughs> him the day before we record here are the football picks this week. I can hear the, uh, Hey, but that's not a, so that's not something you're going to experience next week, and certainly not if you head over to our friends uh, over at Logo Mats. They're going yes. to be at booth twenty three thirty three. They've got a, amazing mats, those point of purchase displays, all those wonderful things. But they've got some new product they're excited to show you uh, about. Their, they've got their new mascot, Lenny the Lizard. It's it, it, so much is going on there. You won't your expo just frankly won't be complete if you don't go to Logo Mats booth. Two, three, three, three. Uh, and they're going to help you, as our new tagline says, stand out where others fit in. Kirby, it's been my pleasure 
to record a podcast with you. Hey, folks, if you're still listening, and probably you're not, but let's assume you are, we're going to be recording live next week in Las Vegas. We're going to share that information on our social media. We'd love for you guys to come by uh, our sponsor next week, uh, who's going to be Bam Bams, just so everybody knows. So uh, we're going to schedule a time to record the podcast live (laughs) in uh, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. So we are excited to do that. Kirby, I wish you safe travels and and you and Jade safe travels to Las Vegas. Uh, I will see you probably Sunday night. I'm sure you and I will connect for a a beverage uh, or two after SKUCon and after I've done a couple things. So we'll see you in Vegas and uh, let's go do it.